Well, good evening, friends. Welcome back to the Castro Valley News live show. Um, not three people are watching. Good evening, friends. Good evening, folks. This is the Castro Valley News live show. And what we do with this show is basically like an old school radio show. So there's no video. There's just audio. And our thought is, excuse me, let me spit out my gum there. The thought is that we would have like a cool radio-like show where we can discuss events of the day, things that are happening in town. And let's dig right into the roll call. Good evening, Kimberly. Good evening, Robin. Good evening, Catherine. Good evening, Bob. Thank you for all you do for the show, Bob. I appreciate it. Uh, good evening, Elda. Good evening, uh, I don't want to say this wrong. Good evening, Tap Tapatia. Tapatia. What a beautiful name you have. That is amazing. Uh, please correct me if I pronounce that incorrect. I'm just going to keep looking for the roll call to say good evening to folks. Did I say good evening to Catherine? Good evening, Catherine. If I overlooked you, I apologize. Uh, yes, and also our moderator is always thinking at least 20 minutes in advance and has posted the call in line or text in line, which is 510-331-9112. Good evening, Dennis. And Dennis is wishing everyone a happy 420. Good evening, Deborah. Good evening, Nicole. So one more time, if you have a topic, comment, complaint, confession, concern, item that you would like for us to discuss, 510-331-9112. You can call or you can text in. I will not mention your name, so there will be that factor of anonymity that will be respected, unless you say otherwise. But 510-331-9112, um, if you would like to call or text in um, something that you have on your mind. And as Dennis mentioned, today is 420, which is the international, oh, excuse me. Good evening, Michelle. Hope you're doing well. Oh, that rhymed. Uh, that's, uh, I owe Dr. Seuss 50 cents for that one. Sorry. Um, yeah. So let me, um, let's let the roll call kind of go a little bit longer because I don't want to, I don't want to miss people. Um, actually in the meantime, let me, let me give a shout out to our sponsors here. That would be a special thanks to tonight's sponsor, Forester.org, a local nonprofit with the mission to reforest urban communities. You can learn more at their website. That is Forester.org, F-O-R-E-S-T-R.org. And if you're not familiar with them, I will let you know who they are. You probably see them on the side of the freeway picking up trash, which if you listen to the show, that is one of my own personal uh, passions in, in my neighborhood. And I've said this numerous times, and I guess I'm going to sound like a broken record one more time. Let me, let me give you the name again of, of our tonight's sponsor. That's Forrester, F-O-R-E-S-T-R.org. They are based here in Castro Valley. They're a nonprofit. Their mission is to reforest urban communities, and they also uh, pick up a lot of garbage on our freeway on and off ramps. So thank you, Forrester, for supporting us and for doing what you do in the community. Good evening, Tiara. And uh, we are glad that you are able to listen tonight. Thank you for listening to the show. Uh, a text just came in from... from From the 510 area code, uh, lately I have seen a lot of cars parked in the no parking marks in between accessible handicapped parking spaces. How should this be handled? You should definitely call the CHP for that or the sheriff's. Um, actually, let me retract that. You should definitely call the sheriff's department on that. Uh, their phone number is 510-667-7721 and they will come out and... 
address the situation. Bob is mentioning he did not see anything new at the Chabot Cinema driving by this morning, and that was actually on my mind as well. Their target date to reopen was today. Um, I know there have been quite a few folks inside the theater doing a lot of work, so maybe they're a little bit behind on schedule. I don't, I don't know. However, in the meantime, I will definitely, and I, I will all, I will thank Bob for bringing that up, but I will reach out to the contact that I have at the Chabot and see what's going on. Cause I know a lot of us are excited to, to see the theater reopen. And in the meantime, uh, good evening, Julie. Good evening, John. John, I hope you're doing well. Kimberly is asking, where is Dawn? And let me, let me, um, bear with me as I look something up here. Just typing here, looking something up. So I know we get a lot of questions about where Don is at, and that is Don with One Bad Apple Records. Let me give you his phone number to the shop. Um, you it, Definitely, you can also go into his shop. They are located at, uh, where's the address? 2576 Castro Valley Boulevard. Uh, that is directly across the street from basically Pete's Hardware. And let me give you the phone number for One Bad Apple Records so you can call Don and ask him where he's at. Uh, last thing I heard, there were uh, he was busy with some, some family issues, so that might still be the case. He may be busy with other things, but um, either way, definitely support this wonderful local independent, locally owned business, One Bad Apple Records. Uh, the phone number there is 510-889. 9409. Definitely give Don a call and say, where you been? We want to see you on the show. Uh, Bob is mentioning, I think Don is on a Tuesday evening bowling league. That, that could be true. That could be true. Uh, John, I am glad you're doing well. Uh, Wayne is asking, how do we get the Safeway at Redwood Road to clean up the landscape? It is a mess. Um, the owner of that shopping center is, I believe it's uh, Sarani. I don't have the phone number. Let me see if I can find that. I, I have the gentleman's phone number somewhere in my files. Let me see if I can get lucky here. Um, not finding it here. Um, Uh, I am coming up with absolutely nothing here. So Wayne, I wish I had a better answer to your question. Um, a suggestion could be to go into Safeway and let them know that you have concerns about the landscape. And I'm, I'm not sure... If it's on the property, that would definitely be the landowner's issue. But if it's on the sidewalk, that would definitely be a county issue. So if you could, um, Wayne, please uh, send me a direct message to the page and I will, um, I'll do some footwork and I'll find a phone number for you or a contact. Um, and also if you can definitely let me know the specific area of the landscaping that is unsightly. One of the things historically that has been a concern at the Castro Valley Mac and among residents is the uh, amount of items and things that seem to accumulate behind Safeway. And in particular today, um, there's a lot of stuff. It looks like a lot of pallets and a lot of garbage and a lot of stuff. Wayne is saying, okay, so please definitely shoot me a, a direct message or an email at castrovalleytelevision at gmail.com and I will definitely do what I can to get some kind of information for you so that uh, your concern can be addressed by either the property owner or the county. But um, getting back to, um, yes, the the situation behind Safeway. There have been numerous MAC meetings where um, former MAC 
member Cheryl Moralia. Uh, Cheryl, if you're listening, best to you. Hope you're doing well. Uh, that was kind of a pet peeve in regards to uh, the, the mess behind Safeway. And Robin is asking what is being built at the entrance to 580 on Redwood Road. That's going to be a two-story combination uh, in, industrial structure. And I honestly don't know what the delay is. It looks like they have a lot of um, cement that's been poured, but that's been a while, and they haven't they haven't really made a whole lot of progress on it lately. So, um, like I said, it is a uh, it's a two story industrial building complex that was approved, I believe, ooh, close to two years ago. Um, but yes, I will, I'll try to find a, we had a photo that we shared of it a long time ago, but like I said, it's, it's a two story industrial use building. So, um, what could be there? Maybe, um, not heavy industrial use, but, uh, probably something like offices and, and maybe a, a light machine shop maybe located there, but your observation is totally accurate. It's, uh, <laughs> it is taking them quite a long time to, to make that happen. Uh, let me see if I'm missing anybody who... Uh, good evening, Julie. Good evening to you. I said hello to Tiara. Bob <laughs> Bob was waiting. I'm sorry. I, I We got a late start here tonight. So looks like we're up to speed with the roll call. And the sponsor, I should be crossing things off the list here. Um, let me get to the next thing here. That is an update that I have for you guys on the Valley View Park. If you're not familiar with, familiar with this location, it is, oh, it's a 24 acre parcel that is above Sydney and Stanton. And if you've never been up there, it's beautiful. It's amazing. Uh, they named it Valley View Park because it has some amazing views of Castor Valley. It is, for the most part, fenced off, but there are certain access points that are not blocked off. So people do go up there with their dogs. I would be cautious as I'm not certain how maintained the grounds are. I'm, I'm pretty certain that a lot of the, the landscaping is, is being cut down, but the likelihood of, of rocks and or bottles being up in, the, in that area is extremely likely. So uh, Valley View Park, the update is, and, and one more time, it is uh, in 2014 um, Hayward area, Parks and Recreation purchased the 24-acre parcel from East Bay Municipal Utility District, which is East Bay Mud. And East Bay Mud, let me give you some more backstory that I kind of have stored in, in the gray matter here. Um, a long, long time ago, East Bay Mud acquired those 24 acres through eminent domain with the intention of building a filtration uh, system reservoir up there which never happened. So again, in, in 2014, uh, East Bay, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Hayward Area Recreation and Park D District purchased the 24 acre parcel from East Bay Mud for 5.6 million. And there were a number of meetings quite a few years ago with, with designs for the park. And the park district had some uh, rough sketches and rough ideas of, of what could go up there. I think there were uh, baseball, baseball field options and soccer field options and um, because it's 24 acres. However, with that said, um, geographic, sorry, <laughs> the topography up there, that might be the $1 word, uh, excuse me, $2 word for tonight, topography. The topography up there is some of the, some of the areas up there are extremely hilly so doing a whole lot of things and using all the property could be problematic. 
which is why um, before the park department acquired that property, East Bay Mud had put it out, put the property up on the market, and there were a couple of residential projects that were just declined by the MAC. Um, and at that point, East Bay Mud decided to sell it to the Parks Department, which was wonderful. So getting to what's happening now, I reached out to one of the Hayward Area Recreation and Park District Board Directors, uh, Rick Hatcher. If you don't know Rick, Rick is an awesome guy. He's got an insurance business on the boulevard. And um, uh, Rick does a ton of stuff for the community behind the scenes. And uh, here we go. Here, he gave me kind of the kind of the backstory that kind of touches on some of the stuff that I that I had already mentioned. But Valley View, there were two in-person community meetings for Castor Valley Parks early 2020, and one online due to COVID. The meetings were to get feedback on all Castor Valley recreation and park needs. For Valley View, the community stated they wanted a low-impact natural trail-centric park which will be awesome because that area up there is beautiful. It's a gorgeous spot to just, you know, take a little stroll. Um, since then, the Parks Department have completed an environmental and geotechnical reporting. They adopted in June 2020 their next five-year CIP, which is Capital Improvement Plan, and the park is set to be developed during that time. Um, they will have plenty of community outreach and comment for the park, and they, uh, this is Rick speaking, we will do it the Hayward Area Recreation and Parks District way and make sure the community voice is heard. So it sounds like there's going to be some more community meetings in regard to that park, and as soon as I hear about any of those meetings, I will definitely let you guys know because that whole area is it's beautiful. It's amazing. Uh, from what I understand historically, I think there were a couple of schools up there and some houses. But um, one more time, it, it, it's gorgeous up there. That park is going to be amazing. And, and how lucky are we to have another 24-acre parcel park? I'm sorry, 24-acre park in the works. So there you go. That's Valley View Park. I'm excited because I, I, I've i been up there a couple times. I think the kids call it Middle Earth, <laughs> it, but it's 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 just gorgeous. The views are amazing. Um, so with that said, let's let me see if I've missed anybody who's who's on the roll call here. Uh, good evening, Oliver. Uh, OK, I mispronounced the name. Her name is pronounced. Sierra, but with a T, so that's Tierra. And I apologize, Tierra, for mispronouncing your name. Let me make sure I'm not missing anybody in the roll call. Let me just give a shout out to Bob again. Thank you, Bob. Thank you for making the show amazing. Um, so our, okay, I'll, I'll go there. Our moderator is asking to hear more about uh, Billy Bradford and bad business Wait, wait, hold on. Uh, Elda, notice today a longtime welding business leaving or retiring. Uh, the property is for sale. The spot near, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, 580 Marketplace near, across from Petco, on the same side of Transfiguration. That is, uh, is that DOS Metals, I believe? And a friend of mine told me about that the other day. I believe I believe the owner is retiring. And from what, from what I've seen, the owner does fantastic um, work. I think he does a lot of sheet metal work, a lot of metal work in general. Um, I, in regards to the property, property being for sale, I would not be able to answer that. I would go on to um, what are some of the, the real estate uh, websites that might be that might be inclusive to commercials that would it be Redfin or, or something like that? I would call a realtor, um, someone who works with, um, commercial real estate and see if they know if that spot is on the market and, and, and go from there. So getting back to the question that our moderator posed is, uh, would love to hear more about Billy Bradford and bad business model bikes. Billy, uh, actually this is going to be, um, 
I met with Billy over the weekend. And Billy's an awesome guy. You probably recognize his name from the letters to the editor in the weekly paper. Billy is a mover and a shaker in town. And uh, Billy really was in at the forefront of Castor Valley Pride when it started a lot of years ago. I was I was fortunate enough to meet Billy at that time when Castor Valley Pride started. And I have to apologize, I don't know the year, but it has been a number of years. And I, I'm speaking from, from a personal standpoint here. I, I, was, I felt extremely proud and um, fantastic that Castor Valley was gonna have our own um, LGBTQ pride event and it started off as kind of a rally on the corner of Castor Valley Boulevard and Redwood which is I think I think people re refer to it as the protest corner and it grew into an actual event at Castor Valley High and ever since that event has grown exponentially and just been a great addition to all of the other wonderful events here in Castro Valley. And I'll say it again, it, it really was, it, it really felt good and it made me proud of, of my town that we were actually one of the first, I, I guess for the lack of a better term, suburb towns, areas to have a, pro, a, a legitimate pride event. So um, I, I got to tip my cap to Billy on that level because he really, he really made it happen with, with the school district and the community and a number of, of local organizations. Uh, I think Castro Valley Sanitary District have sponsored, uh, the Parks Department have sponsored. So uh, again, that, 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 in and of itself is an achievement to to kind of start an event like that and and have it be successful for so many years. But with that said, um, in regard to Billy Bradford's bad business model bikes, Billy's been doing that for six years. And what he does in his garage is he gets a lot of bicycles that are donated from wonderful Chris Padovana at Eden Bicycles and people from the community. So Billy gets these bicycles and Billy's a bicyclist like I am. So Billy ends up working on these bikes, refurbishing them, bringing up to, uh, you know, the almost new condition and gives them away to people who may not have the money to, to buy a new bike, but want one. And I think it's really, really awesome. And it's one of those, it's another one of those things that makes our town so special, which really is the people here. The people here are so generous, so giving, and so caring for each other and just the community in general and everyone in general. I, it's, it's really, really, um, it's amazing. The, the people that we have here in our town that that you know care so much and do so much in the community so if you are in need of a bicycle and you're on a uh, an income or a, a, you know if you don't have the means to to buy a new bicycle you should look up bad business model bikes on Facebook they're easy to find and reach out to Billy and uh, see what can be done in particular uh, Billy asked if we could reach out to the community and let them know that uh, one of the other things that he does is he refurbishes bicycles for people who ride in the AIDS life cycle. And that's the, the AIDS life cycle is a ride from, I think it's from San Francisco to LA or LA to San Francisco, one of the two, but uh, it raises money for AIDS programs, awareness, and, and clinics and such. So if you have a used road bicycle that you 
are just looking at and it's not moving, definitely let Billy know. He is looking to get those bicycles um, to people who want to do the AIDS life cycle race to, uh, sorry, the ride, it's not a race, the ride to raise funds for, uh, again, AIDS research, uh, treatment clinics, uh, and it's, it's great. So to answer our moderator's <laughs> question, there's that. And again, uh, keep your eyes peeled for the next Castro Valley News Magazine, our, our next magazine that um, I, we're putting kind of on the fast track to get out more because we want to get more valuable information to you guys on a better schedule. I know sometimes you don't see a magazine for two, three months, <laughs> um, but behind the scenes here, we're working on making those happen more frequent. Uh, it's the magazine is actually kind of a kind of a it's a two person show. <laughs> so um, and we don't want to put out something that isn't going to bring valuable information. We, we don't want our magazine to just be kind of a vehicle for advertisements, but the advertisements are are valuable to us because that allows us to continue doing what we're doing and, and we are a business. So uh, I'm sorry if I'm rambling on about the magazine, but um, yes, in the next magazine, there will be a story about Billy Bradford. And thank you to our wonderful, fetching, wise, learned, intelligent moderator for bringing that up. 510-331-9112 is if you would like to text a question, a complaint, confession, topic, anything. Uh, the phone's right in front of me, 510-331-9112. 510-331-9112 if you would like to direct the conversation in a different area. It's up to you. Okay, let's let's get to a heavy one. And I wanted to bring this up, but I but I really wanted to hear feedback from you guys. And I think uh, a recent post on this topic is really indicative of what people are thinking. And that is uh, the verdict in the George Floyd case. And if you missed it, um, Derek Chauvin was found guilty of second degree murder, third degree murder, and second degree manslaughter. And I've got, I've got some mixed feelings about this. I have to confess when I first heard the verdict and I was purposely listening to the radio to hear it live and it came out sooner than than a lot of the reporters were anticipating it there was uh i felt a great deal of joy and then as as i processed it it made me sad and then angry and i'll explain why the sadness was um, that we even had to have this trial in the first place. And angry because it's looking like a life was taken in exchange for, um, what is it, 40 years or 12 years? And it just... It seems so extremely unfair and unjust, but on the same, on the other side of the coin, um, it is a step in the right direction. Um, it shouldn't have to be a step in the right direction that, that we're joyous that, that this happened and that someone was convicted for a, a horrible and heinous crime that should have never happened in the first place. And I don't, I don't, I don't really want to bring up any, any discussion on the validity of, of law enforcement or, or any of that. I think, I think a lot of it is really the, the human factor. And uh, 
Yeah, I don't I don't really want to seem like I'm taking a side on this, but it really um, a lot of the hatred, a lot of the racism that has happened, continues to happen is just it's disgusting and it's it's frustrating. I <laughs> What do you guys think? Um 510-331-9112, you will be anonymous. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, we got a, there were a lot of comments on the initial posting. A lot of people were mentioning justice was served. Um, let's see. Uh, step one and true justice. Time for step two. Um, let's see. A lot of people were very thankful about it. A lot of people were expressing gratitude, which I totally understand. Um, And Roberto, not me, another Roberto actually brought up something that I also wanted to bring up is um, why are the mass shootings jumping up? And that's that's totally true. And I, I'm, I'm dumbfounded and confused. All of these mass shootings are happening now that we are, you know, not in this strict shelter in place situation like we were before. And correct me if I'm wrong, during shelter in place, I didn't hear of mass shootings like this. So is this is this a point? And 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 I had a friend bring this point to me that I point up to me that I had not thought about. Is is the situation that now we are we're at a different level where we're um, mingle commingling with each other again? Is this just a frustration we have with each other? Do we not like each other? So we're we're back to this point where we're so angry that some people are so angry that they have to take others' lives because they are not happy themselves. And I don't want to get into the gun issue because that's a completely different conversation that I kind of don't want to get into. I think a lot of this is a mental health issue. I think some of it is also people sometimes don't reach out for help when they should. And a lot of times reaching out for help is more than likely just reaching out to someone who already loves you or already cares for you. And maybe we're, maybe some people are afraid to express those feelings and be, I don't know, vulnerable or feel shameful because of, of reaching out. And I, I told, I understand that. I, I get that. I've, I've lived through that. I know what that's like to have, uh, things that you feel that you are afraid or, or, um, trepidatious. I, I hope that's the right word. That's another $2 word. You're just fearful to express these things to someone else because you'll be judged. And I would probably bet a lot of the time, if you were to express those feelings to someone that you know, or someone that you trust, someone that cares for you, they will want to help you and want to not see you do something violent to yourself or others. So if you're, if you are, if you think you know someone who's in that position, both sides of the fence there, reach out or, you know, reach out to someone else if you don't feel good about things and then if you see somebody who's not in a good place reached out reach out to them as well um i didn't thank goodness i didn't get too deep in that topic but it's it's just i i don't understand how it it, it just these these pe the, the these well i do I understand how these feelings reach a boiling point and and things get extreme but I, I just wish that they wouldn't. I wish, wish that people would reach out. I was in a position a long time ago where I didn't reach out. I wish I had. And um, it's just sad. So <laughs> there's your, your digression for the evening. Um, again, if you have any comments or, or observations about these, these terrible mass shootings as well, feel free to text me at 510-331-9112 or call. Either or, if you want to discuss something about the um, the George Floyd, the the verdict judgment that came out that 
that was issued today, please do so too. I don't have a lot else on the list, so I'll leave it up to you guys. We're not, we're like almost halfway into the show. And if there's nothing else to talk about, I'm just going to cut it off. <laughs> um, and I apologize, there should have been more stuff for the list for tonight. Um, actually, there's one more thing that I would like to mention, and, and also let those wheels turn if you want to if you want to comment or interact the best way for me to see your comments or your questions is to text me 510-331-9112 again i i won't give out your name unless you say that's okay but i would love to hear what you guys are thinking about the mass shootings and the derek chauvin the verdict um i think I think definitely the entire George Floyd situation hit home here in Castro Valley significantly. We had two major protests organized by Castro Valley High students. I was at both of them. The first one was amazing. The second one was uh, bordered on a little bit of chaos, and I think some of it went overboard. But uh, thinking back, there was a lot of anger. There was a lot of anger. There was a lot of frustration over what was ha what had happened. Um, so I think, to be honest, the George Floyd, the entire situation is definitely topical to, to Castro Valley. So if you have some observations, some, some comments, some thoughts on either of those, please feel free to text the line 510-331. 9112. It's completely anonymous. I'm not going to mention your name unless you're okay with it. Or if you have some comments or observations on the mass shootings that keep happening, I think there was another one today, uh, please text in 510-331-9112. You guys will be keeping the show going because like I said, I'm kind of at the end of the list here. But I do have one more um, <laughs> hey, Aaron. I love Aaron. Aaron is, Aaron says she thinks that hate is begetting hate. And if she does not stand up for love, then she is contributing. I wholeheartedly agree with you. I think love is more powerful than hate. I think there are more people who want to be loving and loved than there are people who want to hate and destroy and kill. So I agree with you wholeheartedly, Aaron. And thank you. Thank you for the comment. Our moderator, our handsome fetching moderator, um, has a topic. How are people feeling about school being re having returned to in-person instruction? What are you guys thinking about that? 510-331-9112. We've got a lot of <laughs> got a lot of third rail topics going on here and I know you guys have opinions, so 510-331 nine one one two in person instruction at schools returning we're talking about the george floyd verdict coming in we're also talking about mass shooting it's a fielder's choice there's three of them right there for you um i'll try to dig into one of them and give you some more insights that might be food for thought if you'd like to text in 510-331-9112 is the text line i will read your comment anonymously i'll just give the area code but um getting back to the george floyd protests that happened here in castro valley oh we got a phone call hang on guys hey bob hi how are you doing sir I'm doing good, and, and I, you know, I like our show because. It, hang on a second, I got to turn down the, turn down the volume. There we go. So, the, the, because outside, you know, the protests were in Castro Valley, so they do affect us. And if the outcome of the verdict has been different, I'm sure it would affect us again. Yeah. My feeling is. Bad things like the Floyd and all that, they've, been, they've happened forever. The difference is that, 
you can't do anything. Nothing happens right now where it's not, where somebody doesn't have a picture of it. Or and video. if you look at the, um, you know, if you look at the demonstrations like that, half the people are demonstrating and the other half of the people are holding their cell phones up. So they can all get, and, and that's, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. uh, because when uh, Rodney King first happened and you saw this, you know, grainy video that somebody had with a camcorder, mm -hmm. and that was, just, people were shocked. Well, now, and, and the thing is, the, it's not a majority. It's just that you can't get away with it anymore. Right. You you, you couldn't get away today with the old South lynchings and things like that because people would see it, and people would. It, it, you know, you could. You, it sometimes took twenty years in civil rights uh, 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 charges to get a conviction for a lynching in the South. That wouldn't happen anymore. So that that that's actually a good thing to come out of the whole whole purpose. But um, you know, it was disturbing, and you know, people had prejudged what they thought the jury should do. And frankly, when I was watching it this afternoon, and I waited, and I you was know, looking at my Fitbit, and my heart rate was was elevated and all that. <laughs> and I was just, you know, I was scared of, you know, what would happen because of righteous indignation mm -hmm. if it had gone another way, but, or is it just the way our country split? So that, that's, you know, you gave out the phone number enough times. I figured I'd call and I encourage other people who have opinions, call them and, and, and uh, let you know what you think. So it, I, I don't have, an answer, um, the fact that the whole trial was on television, yeah. which I, if it were my trial, I'm not sure I would have wanted on TV. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's, um, but you know, the fact that we have forums like this, that you can discuss it, and all it, I think it brings it together, and, and when something bad happens, it gives you a forum to call people out. Great point. I so, agree. And I, I, and I, I remember how powerful the Rodney King video was. Because previous to that, you would hear a news story, you might get a, a photo, you might get something, but to see it actually happen was so incredi incredibly powerful. It was, re it was amazingly powerful. You still there, Bob? Yeah. Okay. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was, uh, I was, um, I'm, I'm, I'm monitoring the A's game in the background. Okay. So really weird tap, They're tap on a heck of a winning streak, aren't they? Yeah, they won the first game. Yeah. <laughs> they're, nine, they're, ahead, they're ahead one nothing, but there's one on and one out, and the A's just walked off the field, and I'm not quite sure what was going, what's going on. Okay. So. Something strange. It was, you know, we go to a baseball game. Oh, I want to talk about something different. I don't want to change the subject. Because no, go for pretty, it. Go for it. Absolutely. Pretty heavy. I went to an ace game on Saturday. It was the first thing like I've done in a year and a half because I'm a big hockey fan, A's fan. Go to lots of both the Sharks and the A's. And the post COVID experience at the Coliseum was excellent. I, I did not feel at all threatened. First of all, I'm vaccinated, so okay. that helps. But they were really, really strict about their pods and not sitting where you weren't supposed to sit. They have the seats that they don't want you sitting on are, are uh, zip tied. And the seats where you can sit have little yellow tabs on the back of them. And if you should somehow sit with a seat that doesn't have a tab, they come and they ask you to please, you know, unlike the old days where you could pretty much buy a ticket and sit wherever you wanted. Oh, yeah, I remember they, those they days. Have, <laughs> you know, they would come and do that. If you were eating, you could have your mask off. But if you were, if you didn't have the mask on, they would come and very politely ask you to put it back on. Oh, that's great. And, and uh, you know, and, you know, 
part of the problem with the Coliseum, especially in the lower levels, is the sight angles aren't that are, are not that good. And if somebody's sitting in front of you, you can't really see. So, oh, yeah. I mean, I kind of enjoyed it not having somebody sitting in front of me. Cause yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they they did a, you know, that plus the fact they won because, you know, the first six games, I think I talked about this last time, I couldn't believe how horrible they were. Yeah. And then they turned the switch and now they're playing just as good as they were bad. Yeah, they've won they're, nine in a row, right? They've won nine in a row now. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And, uh, and then I'm going to go to a Sharks game next week. Cool. And, I'll, and to go there, you have to show that you are either you either have to have a COVID test or show that you've been vaccinated. Oh. So, oh, I see what's happened there. One of the light banks went out. Ah, uh, okay. Are the um are the luxury boxes at the a at the Coliseum open? Uh, they've been advertising them. Okay. They've been advertising them. Uh, you know, I again, it's under. In fact, I think you can get a suite for one game for six people. For I'm doing an ad for the A's, but this is just the emails they sent me for like five hundred ninety dollars or something like wow. that. Wow! It comes with food and a private bathroom and right. That's a steal. Stuff like that. That's a but, steal. Uh, you know, I'm a I, you know, A's are part of our community, and one of you know one of the reasons I like living in Castro Valley because people say, "Do you go to a baseball game?" I said, "Well, I could decide because I want to and be there in 15 minutes." Exactly. Yeah. And 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 if they weren't there, you know, you'd miss them. Oh, there's so, the A's have been huge here with all the things that they've done in the community, at the libraries, at schools. It's it's amazing. They're 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 ingrained in the Bay Area, literally. And then the last thing that I, well, I sent you a text. I don't know if you saw it. Yes, I did. Busy doing the show. Um, East Bay Mud's kind of an interesting organization. And getting water to your faucet from the Sierra is not an uncomplicated situation. And the issues of water pressure and where the reservoirs are and how they work and things like that. I once I learned a lot about at one time. Oh, back in the late 80s, they were looking to build a reservoir just above the San Leandro Reservoir. It was going to be called the Buckhorn, it was Buckhorn Canyon, and it was going to be the um, um, Buckhorn Dam. And they, they were going to use that to store water from um, wet years so they'd have extra water on uh, dry years. And... Uh, they put together a citizen committee and they did an environmental impact report. And the biggest problem with it was to build it for a year and a half, there would have been like 800 uh, gravel trucks a day going up and down Redwood Road through Castro Valley. Oh, wow. And I was a representative of Proctor School and to have all those trucks going by and yeah, the diesel emissions and all that. Mm-hmm. And eventually they came up with a uh, uh, an agreement to spend some of that money to help the Contra Costa Water District when they built the reservoir that's out by, um, I think it's not Los Vicaris, it's out in, by Brentwood, uh, the road that goes between Brentwood and Livermore, out, uh, Vasco Road, out there there's a reservoir, and uh, uh, they raised it and we can East Bay Mud, but, but there's there's all these inter- and it's kind of an interesting thing. Um, they you know wanted me to really understand the whole water project. They took me, they sent me to uh, uh, Oroville, and I actually was in the power plant in the Oroville Dam, the one that almost failed a couple of years ago. But uh, if you can get somebody from them on just to talk, I mean, I'm sure they they have people who just want to talk about uh, you know water conservation. Oh yeah, in, that's going to be huge pretty stuff soon. Like that. But just you know, I, I'm I've always been curious because I live up here on uh, uh, Lamps by by Lamps and Walnut. There's the tank up there, and how that water gets from there into there, and how it gets from there to my house. Be something interesting to talk about. Yeah. So that was, that was an idea for another show. 
That's a great idea. I'll reach out to them. Um, there is a uh, one of their board of directors lives in Castle Valley, Frank Millen. Yeah, Frank. Frank, I I, I had uh, uh, an interesting uh, experience with him. We lived on a house on Abbey Drive, and one day, um, our bathtub uh, uh, faucet just exploded, and water was just coming out and so we had to go turn the water off and get a plumber to fix it like that and the problem was we didn't have a restrictor and the water pressure in that area is very high and i called him to complain about it he said well you should be happy because most people complain because they have low water pressure <laughs> and, and i had spent a little bit of money to put some kind of restrictor on it like that but uh uh you know the whole whole thing about water is it's a gravity system, and it, you have to get it high, and then it goes downhill. When you have a place with a lot of hills like that, then you know you have to pump it up. It, it runs down by itself. It's it's a challenge. And uh, he was he was uh, you know uh, a little less sympathetic to my personal needs than I thought he should be at that time. But he's very dedicated to it, and has been uh, you know been involved and represented us for many many years. Yeah, he's a good guy. He, He's 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 a he's a good source also. Yeah, definitely. Anyhow, so I answered your first question. I probably bored everybody else because we're down to fewer listeners. Than we had <laughs> no, that's all right. That's all right. I but, appreci- but but I didn't want you to cut out early. So <laughs> oh, I appreciate that, Bob. Thank you so much. Okay, good talking to you. We'll see you next week. Good talking to you too. Take care. Bye right. bye. So if you would like to call in or text a question, a concern, or a topic, 510-331-9112. Looks like we're getting close to the end of the show. Let me see if there's any other comments or things that were put up. Good evening, Brooke. Missed you during the roll call. Also, Annette, good evening. Good evening to Christy. And let me, ah, thank you, Aaron. Aaron says, if you're looking for some of our past magazine, there are some at Aaron's Art Studio. And thank you so much uh, to Aaron for mentioning that. Um, Let's see. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Don is mentioning final four days at Merle's Hard Hallmark in the village. So definitely um, go and say hello and probably goodbye to to Bill Saltzman over at um, the Hallmark. Uh, Brenda is asking any news about the Beer Baron Castro Valley location opening. And I have heard as- absolutely nothing, Brenda. I wish I had information for you. I sent my contact with them a couple of times in the past couple weeks. Haven't heard anything back. The last thing that I heard is uh, they do have plans that there are that are being reviewed. I don't know if the county has them, but I thank you for the reminder. I will reach out to them one more time. So let me go back here. Okay, five one zero. Three three one nine one one two. If you would like to. Pose a question, comment, confession, concern, topic, idea. Thank you guys so much for listening to me do some verbal um, tap dancing around the topic of um, the the verdict with uh, Derek Chauvin and and the shootings. I think we would all be. <laughs> uh, Bob is mentioning so Hallmark is beating Connolly's on closing. It seems like Connolly's has been closing for half a year. Let me know if that estimation, that estimate is incorrect. Um, I, I see in the mornings that there are trucks bringing more furniture to them. So I, 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 I'm not certain if they are closing. Maybe it's a closing sale that theoretically someday in the next few years they may close, but...
thank you, Bob, for the for the comic relief, and also thank you, Bob, for uh, Craig is saying try two years. Um, yes, uh, Craig has also commented about uh, the the Connollys closing, and I think I think for months there were signs that said last fi final days, so they were final months. But um, bless their hearts, the Connollys are, are are great folks. They've they've been in the business for a lot of years, and uh, hopefully maybe the closing sales situation helped them stay afloat and maybe they'll stay open indefinitely. Since we're talking about businesses, a lot of places are opening up. People are out shopping. Please definitely continue shopping local. Continue dining at our restaurants. They're open. They are allowed to have people inside now eating Please shop local, shop small, shop often. A lot of these folks who own the businesses in our town are our neighbors. So please shop local. Do whatever you can to not go online and stay local and help our business community remain vibrant and alive in our community. With that said, we've got one more minute. I'll give you the phone number one more time, 510-331. 9112, 510-331-9112. If you have a comment, question, complaint, confession, I'd love to hear from you. Um, let me see here. Doesn't look like there's any other. Uh, good evening to Oliver. I missed you in the roll call. Thank you for listening to the show. All right, guys. Thank you guys for joining us again. We will be back here next week, 7 p.m. Thank you, Bob, for calling in and all you do to keep the show moving. As always, be good to each other. And of course, when the going gets weird, the weird turn pro. Stay safe, everyone.